Welcome back to It Starts Now, the happy hour of finance and business. My name is Stanley, and today's episode, I have a very, very, very important and special guest. We are in the most recognizable place that you could possibly be, which is the Gentleman's Factory. We're downtown Brooklyn. This is probably the second location and plenty more to come. My guest today is has numerous accolades. I can run through them, but we're going to go through the conversation. He's also not only the founder of Gentleman's Factory, but he does the Haitian American Caucus. He is also the advisory board of Eat Oprah. Man, this is a list of things that he did. But the most important thing, he's an advocate for change. He's building a community where black men are coming together and uniting and creating something so special. On today's episode, please welcome my guest, Jeff Lindor. Jeff, it's good to have you. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's my man. Good, 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 good. Hey, you noticed my smooth voice today? <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes. You yeah. know the reason behind that? Uh. Because you're a smooth guy. Uh, I've never seen Jeff raise his voice. <laughs> He's always speaking at this calm uh, tone. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we, we, it's a pleasure to have you on today. There's so many things that we can touch on, but um, I really would like for you not only to introduce yourself and introduce the premise behind Gentleman's Factory, mm-hmm. but I also want you to... Tell us what the success story is for Gentleman Factory. What does success look like? Yeah, I mean, uh, success looks like. First, I'll start first, there. Let's introduce yourself first. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Jeff Lindor, mm-hmm. founder and CEO of the Gentleman's Factory. And uh, when I hear Gentleman's Factory, I hear community. I hear lifestyle. I hear uh, factory is where things are getting built, you know. And it's really a community for uh, black and brown men to build things together. And that's building ourselves, that's building products, that's building change, you know? And, um, you know, what success looks like for me via Gentleman's Factory is mobilizing uh, a community, tens, hundreds, thousands, millions of people, black men and women, to uh you know have the world where they're actively participating in it rather rather than being a byproduct of it i have a question right um how did you think this business model would be so successful knowing that black black men coming together has a stigma well but you know i think in business uh, putting my business MBA hat on. Yeah. I don't have an MBA, by the way. Right? But, uh, <laughs> you know, um, it, it's opportunity, right? Right. Like, what's the market saying? And w- who is solving this problem of isolation? So, like, if you, like, see a problem, then there has to be a solution. Right. Right? Um, and that's with anything. And I think that... Um, one of the reasons with the difficulty of this, um, you know, solving solutions for this is because it's been historic for like a hun- hundreds of years, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's all by design. So um, I think, you know, and we're not as successful yet, right? Uh, we're, uh, you know, growing and growing and growing. And then, mm-hmm. you know, things have been good over the past five years. But it's also because of our process to it, right? Like, we don't see it as a business. We see it as a vehicle to empower um, and facilitate change. And in business, if you're not solving a problem, then you're not in business, right? Like, it's a hobby. It, it, it's a, you know, good thing to do Mm -hmm. but we look at it from a data lens and also from a lens of like what problem are we solving because once you solve a problem you don't have to sell Mm -hmm. you're you're providing something that the market needs for now you you recognize a problem right and you found a solution to it and i'm pretty sure it wasn't easy to identify the problem, yeah, right, because not of us, not a lot of us, sit down and say we need to create a membership where we feel that black and brown men can come together and unite, mm-hmm. and that we actually gonna pay to unify. Yep, ideas. 
So where did you tap into that, that you identified that problem? Well, a number of things. One, so this idea started out like when I was in graduate school and I took a social entrepreneurship class where I was learning models on how to take what your passions were to create an enterprise out of it, right? Like right. That, was, that was literally, so Gentleman's Factory was essentially my capstone for this um, grad, you know, in like grad school, mm -hmm. right? But then I was also working for a health insurance company, one of the largest in New York. And I was a part of the brand and strategy team. And uh, we had a large budget in the millions in, you know, we were looking to market to black men specifically because that was during the Affordable Care Act, right? Mm -hmm. So we were looking to see, hey, like, where do black men in the middle class go and what are the institutions and where do they physically go? Because we wanted to spend ad dollars there to bring out salespeople there, et cetera. So it's like if I'm in New York City and have millions of dollars to put ad dollars into physical spaces where black men are that are non-religious and non-fraternal, mm. then it's like, oh, where are they, right? right? So if you think about it, I'm in New York City, all of the money in the world, mm -hmm. well, not all of the money, right? But I mean, <laughs> I could have met with anybody mm -hmm. because I had a because I had capital, right? And there were just limited spaces to make a big splash in financially. And of course, there are a lot of really great organizations that are currently doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But I was looking for something that was a bit more innovative, mm -hmm. and you know, there was the gap in the market, right? So, and fast forward when I you know started doing Gentleman's Factory full time. In late um, 2016, I spent about 18 months just understanding what black men need. So that mm -hmm. survey. So that was the research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like 18 months where I had a physical space with no membership model. I literally wanted to understand what black men need. Mm -hmm. And one, and, and when I say this, people are like, wait, but you're black and you're a man, right? Yeah. But, but we I'm, all got different needs. Of course. Yeah. And I'm one man, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, I am married. I have two children. I'm an immigrant. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, raised with both parents, mm -hmm. etc. So you fall in a different bracket yeah. compared to the other young black men, well, and then different personalities. Yeah, right I mean, right. so there's just this full scope, mm -hmm. right? You know, so I have a good understanding of my perspective. But what happens with the black man who was raised in the upper middle class, right? What about biracial? What about Afro Latino? What Flat. about Middle Eastern? One hundred percent. Like, there's just so many different like vantage points which I needed to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, so then you know, um, and then afterwards we started a membership model where I capped it at thirty members because then I wanted to know how can thirty strangers come together and work together and build, etc. You know, and then uh, that's when in early 2019, that's when I really you know. Um, put my foot on the gas and you know that's where gentleman's factory really blew up mm -hmm. and then we were on the front page of the new york times at one point and like all yeah. this like, you, you were on um fox 5 you yeah, were fox, yahoo yeah yeah finance. yeah yeah i mean yeah. like a lot of press um a lot of um was it built off the momentum or was it built off from the idea yeah, like I think it was built off of the need, the fact that spaces like this were very limited, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, you know, um, that New York Times article definitely did open up the world to us. Right. And we raised money and we were going to expand um, in 2020. Right. Like the beginning of 2020, we were mm -hmm. going to open up a massive space in downtown Brooklyn. Right. right? Uh, and, um, you know, but then obviously COVID, the pandemic and, you know, here we are today. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm saying all of that to say that, you know, this has been a process and we've grown organically purposely because I wanted to have a better understanding of what the need is. I am blessed to be in a position where I have lots of really powerful relationships. And if I looked at this as a cash cow, how can I make money off of the community, etc., I would have raised a 
ton of VC mm. capital, mm -hmm. especially in 2019 when we had all of that momentum. There's this company called The Wing, where they raised $120 million from VC capital and um, from venture capitalists. And, um, you know, I was, there were literally articles that, that said, you heard of the wing, here is Gentleman's Factory, and investors were calling, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so I could have raised a significant amount of money mm -hmm. back in 2019 had I looked at this as like a revenue. Oh, um, well, I mean, obviously we're- It's still a know, revenue oh, model, yeah. but- um, Yeah, like I wanted to organically and, authentic, and authentically understand, you know, how to really build this in. Here and you know we're doing very well now, better than a lot of the companies that did raise tons of capital. Or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. but that's because. Uh, and then I'm just um, speculating from what I see from the outside. Mm -hmm. All right, we still there's still a lot of moving parts on the inside. But I think that for me, it's just the ethos system that you created. Yeah. So you have this culture of uh, people that want to be um, part of a network. Yeah. Right. A yeah. growing network. Yep. And I think that's what you're creating, this growing network of people that that look like us, yeah. that can really um adapt and scale. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's that's I think that's probably the difference maker between somebody that's raising with VCs just to, you know, raise the capital and then build this model structure. Yeah. But you're looking at it internally, how do we grow with a culture yeah. that's gonna spread out to the community? Yeah, I mean absolutely. And and you know, I think that I wanted to really personally understand what scalability looked like and how do we scale without losing our authenticity, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that's something that I prioritize, right? It's like, how do we re how do we remain authentic? How do we build an institution that will be here for thousands of years to come, right? You know, how do we ensure that every member has the tools needed for them to succeed right you know so it's those things right and obviously you need a lot of capital to facilitate that mm -hmm. but capital at the expense of um you know being authentic right. is you know like you have to find that balance right? right um and then now here now today i mean like we're doing um relatively well thank god right. um financially we have a very diverse revenue stream model um where you know, we're, we're like, we're um, doing okay, right? <laughs> you know, compared to a lot of the folks who raise capital where they're not, um, I'll just leave it at that. We're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's do this. You walked me through phase one already. Phase one is basically identified. And now we're, we're trying to, uh, without giving too much IP, we're trying to build. Like there's a lot of viewers that want to know how, can I build a gentleman's factory or how can I build something or how did you go through the process mm -hmm. of doing this? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so you walked us through phase one, phase one is basically identifying, mm -hmm. right? What was phase two? <sighs> yeah. Phase one, identifying phase two is, do you know what can kill a business? Mm. Ready for this? What can destroy a business? is a really great marketing strategy. Mm. Break yeah. that down. Um, <laughs> you know, meaning that... I've never heard that before. That's know, what I'm asking. That can destroy business because are you ready for that? Except um, in, in, in March, uh, Biggie's birthday. So Biggie's birthday, uh, what was that? Like March 9th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. March 9th. Um, literally... New York Times front page in the metro section, the full page, right? The full page, print and digital. So when you got on NewYorkTimes.com that day, that was mm -hmm. the first thing that you saw. And also the article, it's a full page, and Gentleman's Factory is the first thing that you see. And the phones kept bringing money coming in. So many different opportunities. Someone even pitched me to, you know, start a reality show, right? It was like, listen, yo, like you had, like, you guys should do a reality show. <laughs> like, yo, like so much, right, so right. much, right? We didn't go through with the reality show, of course not. But it's like the world was saying, yo, like the world opened up to us. Mm -hmm. 
So how do you respond? And are you ready for that kind of attention? Thankfully, we were because we remain true to who we are. Right. So when I had that reality TV show opportunity, when I read through it, it was like, wait, y'all got creative control? Wait, this is, wait, these are the other shows that you got on your platform? Oh, I don't know. Right, right. right. You know what I mean? Right. But if the goal was for Jeff Lindor to make lots of money, then I would have been like, yeah, 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 yo. Like, we have a TV show. Yeah, wait, yeah, how yeah. much I'm paying? Yeah, yeah. Wait, or oh, wait, right? Mm-hmm. Always remember this. If your loyalty could keep, if your loyalty could be bought, then it can always be sold to the highest bidder. So I'm so happy with the approach that we've had over um, you know, when we first started out back in like back when I was in graduate school, up until prior to the world exposure, mm-hmm. because it built the substance. And the authenticity, in the in the authenticity, mm-hmm. and the love for the community, that I can now say, hey, like we're not going to go this direction, even if that means foregoing tons of capital, mm-hmm. because we know that if we go this direction, then we'll be a cool trend. But we won't last long. Jay-Z said something so deep. He says, do you want to be a trend or do you want to be Ralph Lauren? Right, right. right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if I wanted Gentleman's Factor to be this cool new hype, you got to jump. Like, I've never told anybody to ever become a member at Gentleman's Factor. Right. The marketing is, hey, request an invitation. Right? It's by invite. And it's also by invite, right? Mm Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So and it's still a process. You still got to go. And we a interview everybody. Process. Yeah. And with the interview process, like we're also not in the business of declining black and brown men, mm. right? But we're interviewing each other. Hey, this is what Gentleman's Factory is, right? Is this a natural fit? Is this a natural fit for yeah. both of us? For both, yeah. Right? For both of us, mm-hmm. right? You know, hey, these are some of the members. Yeah. These are the things that we're working on. This is the culture here, mm-hmm. right? We love and respect women, right. right? You know, this is not a space where we're talking about how many ladies we've, you know, yeah. married with two ch- two children. I have yeah, a yeah. daughter, right? Like, right. I'm, you know what I'm saying, right? right? So it's like... We're interviewing both of us. But I'm saying that to say, going back to the question um, and going back to authenticity, Mm -hmm. it's like we're very keen on ensuring that our metric is first mission, Mm -hmm. right? Where are we with the mission, Right. right? And then it's revenue, right? Right. But if it was revenue first, then mission, Mm -hmm then that's where we would be in a yeah. compromise state. So you lead with the mission. Yeah, of so, course. But you still got to know what your North Star is. Of right? course. Because you could have a mission, but if it's not pinpointed yep. at exactly where we're trying to go yeah. as a company, as a unit, as a team, yeah, then it's going to be, uh, if that message is not passed down, you know, it still has to trickle down. But For once sure. that message is passed down, then everybody's on the same goal. I think that's when, Everybody understands that, you know what? Yes, we can scale quickly. Yep. Yep. But is it is it the right thing to do because or should we really cement our foundation? Yeah. So we yeah. can last for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. I mean, and, and you know, like and then that's what I was doing for the past five I mean, for the first five years, mm-hmm. right? It was like cementing that foundation. Where are we going? What are we trying mm-hmm. to do? What are we trying to accomplish? But that's also knowing what you guys stand for yeah it, it falls back to knowing who you are and what what the company stands for right yeah and once you recognize who you are and what this brand represents mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. i think it's a lot easier yeah. to yeah. cement the foundation yeah. yeah 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 absolutely but then i had to learn who we are right that's key i had to learn that's that yeah. because one can say hey Oh, yeah, black men, yo, right? Right. Like, folks, you know, like, and I was talking to a good friend of mine, and I hope I don't get in trouble for this, right? But I was talking to a good friend of mine (laughs) last week, and then I was like, yo, like, there were a lot of, because, you know, we've, 
yeah, like I've been here five years full time, right? Mm -hmm. Full time employment with Gentleman's Factory for five years. And again, that's full time with two children, a wife. And and first of all, I don't think people understand <laughs> yeah, the yeah, level of, yeah. uh, of, I don't want to say the word struggle, but the level of focus yeah. required. Yeah, of course. Because of you, you got to still take care of home. Of course. Of and course. then come back and be fully focused. Of course. There. Of course. And, that, and, and that interchange. Yeah takes a lot of toll oh, for sure because for then sure. it takes your time away i know people say it's a balance mm -hmm. but sometimes you need to add a little bit more of focus course, here of course oh no absolutely yeah, but go ahead continue with your story 12 says it's a balance then you know yeah they, they don't really yeah, yeah but go ahead yeah, we gotta keep know. that between us <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i mean so full time and knowing what my market value is right chris rock says a rich man isn't someone with lots of money, but someone with lots of options, mm -hmm. right? So meaning like, I don't need to do this, right? Like I can, if I wanted to go back into, you know, employment, mm -hmm. I can work anywhere that my passion desires. And I could demand, you know, a pay that is you know, that would put me in the upper middle class, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, during the pandemic, I was offered, uh, you know, this really good, powerful job. And I wasn't even looking, like I wasn't looking for a job. Um, you know, 350 a year without even interviewing. It was like, yo, Jeff, are you interested, right? You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, that is power. Right. And it's the power of choice, right? Options. And it's the power of options mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So um, saying all of that to say, going back to, uh, well, you're like, oh, that's my train of thought. Wait, you're <laughs> saying a story about your friend. You don't want to get in trouble for saying this. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so going back to my friend um, with not being in trouble for saying this is that like over the past five years, I've seen a lot of people, um, you know, try to do what gentleman's factory is doing and yeah. not to saying that gentleman's factory created something new because we are just um you know like social clubs and gathering mm -hmm. places mm -hmm. and you know um, yeah. this they've been around for a while for like uh, yeah. over 100 years it's just you guys been the conduit for black and brown people yeah because right? most of the time social clubs been select for the elite it was been yeah. a, Look at right. yeah, 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 totally. I mean, but then again, like you know, so saying that to say that I've seen a lot of people over the past, um, you know, few years really try to go deep into, like, really try to replicate this model in a mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. and you know, they faded away only because the level of consistency that's needed, right? People are like, oh my god, like Jeff is. Look at what he's doing. You know, mm. it's not yeah, but, easy. But you shared with us the story when uh, you got funding initially. For, you, you got from a friend. Yeah, yeah. That um, gave you an investment. You turned around, blew that money. Oh, yeah, word. You swallowed your pride and went back to him oh, of course. and asked for more. Of course. But I don't think people understand that storyline mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about the struggles that you probably went through. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, <laughs> funny story. Yesterday, uh, um, yesterday, a young entrepreneur, like a fellow entrepreneur of mine, um, I, uh, um, was in a short financial situation. Mm -hmm. And then um, he asked me for you know, a few thousand dollars, whatever. Right. And then, you know, I, um, was able to assist, mm -hmm. but what I told him was, I said, get comfortable asking over and over again. And then I also told him, get comfortable asking me over and mm -hmm. over again. And I said, 99% of the time, I'm going to tell you, get the hell out of here. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I have 1%. Yeah. Yeah. 
I just told him, you just got me on a good day. <laughs> right? you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. But it's that level of comfortability, mm -hmm. um, you know, of just being comfortable asking, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then that's the entrepreneurial journey. So uh, willing it back to why, um, you know, a lot of um, companies fail is the access to capital. And with many of us, and myself included, I had to unlearn um, how to not be afraid to ask because as a Haitian, you know, prideful, like, super, we prideful, are super prideful, super prideful. Yeah. We don't show weakness. We, no, we no. do everything I think, ourselves. I think that's been my Achilles heels, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That was mine too. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what? Yeah. Yo, man, I'm, ask, help. <laughs> I'm asking everybody. I'm like, yo, man, listen, man. Yo, Diedrich, man, wire me $10,000, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> and then if Diedrich mm -hmm. says no, right. that's fine, because I'm going to ask him next month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, then, and then now, next month when I ask Diedrich, and then he tells me no, I'm going to monitor to see, was it like a high pitch no? Was it a low pitch no? <laughs> you know what oh, I'm that's saying? Good yeah. hey, <laughs> like, I was thinking more like you monitor, um, did I ask too much? Uh, yeah. Then I lower yeah. it down. Yeah, 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 so yeah. If I ask for ten racks, yeah. right, then, all right. How about five bands? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's so um, dope? I mean, and yeah. in, in what's so deep is um, one of my um, early investors and mentors and close friends of mine. When I was in a cash jam um, in the early stages, and then um, you know I, I needed to pay like the rent in I don't know the office rent and like oh just so, like so much stuff and I need expenses, you know like and I needed. Um, like eight grand right you know that day right so then you know we met up and then he wrote me a check for eight grand um and he said something so deep he said yo jeff you want to know why i'm able to do this i said why because he said it's within his capacity to do so. Mm -hmm. So his relationship with eight thousand dollars is a different kind of relationship than other people with right. eight thousand right. dollars. So it's within his capacity. So then he then charged me, um, and this was year two of full time entrepreneurship. He then told me. He said, "Listen, Jeff, what I need you to do is to increase the capacity." of the black community mm. right mm. because now if he's asking you to pay it forward pay it forward mm -hmm. but then that also helped me define and strengthen gentleman's factory's model and gentleman's factory's why so if i would have just thought of gentleman's factory and raised 10 million dollars from vcs mm -hmm. three months later then what the level of authenticity into the brand would have been that way. And I'm not anti VC, mm -hmm. right? You know, gentleman's factory has a small fund and we invest in, um, companies, et cetera. So I'm definitely not anti VC. Mm. We're not a VC. No one inbox me. Yeah. For no <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. our check sizes is not yeah. like, you yeah. know, moderate level. Moderate yeah. Level. Like, yeah. 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 I don't even want to say the figure because I don't want no <laughs> one who who knows our capacity yeah, yeah, yeah. getting this up, right? So yeah, so we give Starbucks gift cards, all right? right? You, know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what we get, right? You know, times. Uh, okay, no, let me stop. Not even tell you the times, right? Because then folks will do the math. Anyway, so um, no, but in that though, it's like going back to uh, just understanding the capacity and for the past five years really being ingrained into mm -hmm. um all levels of blackness right so like you know financially me personally oh man like you know the way my credit score was set up <laughs> you know what, I'm saying? what right you know so i had to go through the valley, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, to um, mm -hmm. head to the promised land, right? I'm, I'm glad you touched on something because um, the credit thing is can play out two ways. Yeah. When you're working mm -hmm. and you have uh, some kind of stability. Yeah. 
and your credit is good mm. or whether it's bad, you, you, you'll get some kind of funding. Maybe not the, the amount of money that you want for a loan. Mm -hmm. But as an entrepreneur, when money's not coming in mm. and you go for a loan, mm. whether your credit is great or not, mm. they're going to ask you for how you're going to repay this back. That's a fact. That's a fact. So a lot, we don't f look at it when when it comes to okay maybe i need to take out this loan before i leave this position that's a fact. to start the business that's a fact right because once your business start rolling if you're not generating a certain amount of money and it's going to be hard for you to get a loan right that's then you got to go to sba and then it's a long process and yep. and all that stuff so I'm, I'm glad you touched on that because i wanted to share that with the viewers um but now let, let's 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 fa fast forward gentleman's factory is doing well right it's fair to say you're doing well i don't want to say very god successful is but god is good god, yeah, is yeah. good god is good and you guys yeah. open up the the lab downtown brooklyn mm -hmm. and you guys plan on opening up yeah. more yeah um i guess i want to ask you to, two two things i want to ask you why has it been successful mm -hmm. right uh, we're besides the the culture and the besides of the going to the community but why has it been successful as far as like um, people staying? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the that's the key thing yeah. in any business because uh, one and I talked about this a lot of times. So sometimes when people go through the funnel, um, it's a lot easier because they already went through that process. And if the service is there, they they stay. If the service is not there, then they go. Why has it that the service has retained? Because you have over three hundred members. Mm -hmm. Why has the service retained people to commit it? to staying right mm -hmm. that's one thing and i think the the other question i want to ask you is like um future wise where do you think that the potentially what what level you think you could get to yeah one i mean i think the reason why it's successful and i'll claim it i'll claim it right we're doing really well thank god yeah um it's because of consistency right like we're consistent and going back to um, the Jay-Z quote of, do you want to be a trend or do you want to be Ralph Lauren? We're never looking to be cool. We're never looking to, yo, like, yo, Jones Factory got... Mm -hmm. It's not... That's hype. We don't ever want the hype. We want the consistency. So Slow and steady. Consistent. Mm -hmm. And then you measure us by... How many contracts members gotten? What are the businesses that were started? How many black men are now going to therapy as a result mm. of Gentleman's Factory? How how um, income Shark Tank? Right, Shark Tank. You right? guys have you know, the, the affiliation with Shark yes, Tank. Yes, yes, right. Like mm -hmm. how many members well got onto Shark Tank? Yeah. How much capital was raised? How much capital yeah. we invested? Right, last right. year, yeah. Gentleman's Factory invested in seven companies right within gentlemen's factory mm -hmm. during a global pandemic yeah i know right matter of fact you guys um i was honored to that you guys asked me to be part of the judging process yes 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 shark tank yes case. yes and I, I, did that person go off to become uh to go off to the actual show yes so then they had got flown out yes okay. yes right. yes right so like that's where you judge us by is the metrics mm -hmm. how are we changing lives Yes, like, you know, it's cool. Like, you know, we have members, some some, some are celebrities and some are doing really good. But that's not what we pride ourselves in. We pride ourselves in our lives being changed. So it is that level of consistency and always trying to get better, right? Like, you know, it's a factory. So we're constantly retooling and we're measuring our success to go forward. I think now, though, as we go into this new era, mm -hmm. the world is opening back up etc and we have a really interesting model now um and our model is twofold we have two forms of membership well we have three we have the digital membership where we have members all across earth right um logging onto our digital platform our our, our app and we're constantly making you know um, changes and updating it and making sure that there's a lot of value there now we're um, we have our community membership, and what that is is that um, in the New York metropolitan area, we're galvanizing members who live in this uh, part of the world, and we're having different activities mm -hmm. throughout the city. In 
black owned establishments. So two days ago, one of our members owns a restaurant, nice bar. So, yeah. so we had an Darnell, Joseph. Darnell jo um, Joseph, shout mm -hmm. out to Darnell mm -hmm. for purpose, his restaurant in Bed-Stuy. Mm -hmm. So like we're having all of these different activations inside black owned establishments supporting each other supporting each other but then also creating great experiences mm -hmm. where we you know exchange information and build together mm -hmm. right so gentleman's factory isn't just our physical spaces but it's a community right 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 right, right. so now within the community mm -hmm. we're having all of these different activities um you know and like we we also have a running group, right? We have a health and wellness group, et cetera. So it's all of these in-person engagements now that the world is opening back up. Mm -hmm. And then with our physical locations, we call it labs. And our labs members go there for specific functionalities. Mm -hmm. So with our first gentleman's factory, it's now going to be called the creative lab. And that's a space where the creatives go mm -hmm. to be creative, right? <laughs> so that's podcasting, that's photography, that's, you know, um, um, like a small production room, right? Like for those who want to film their commercials, et cetera, we'll have all of the equipment there needed for you to just make it user-friendly, for you to just be great. Be great, create at our creative lab. Right. Here, this beautiful location that we have here, now it's in downtown Brooklyn, it's the Innovation Lab. Where the goal for when you come in here is to innovate, it's to connect with another member mm -hmm. to discuss the next hundred years and to plan and to facilitate how you will bring forth solutions. Because here we don't talk about problems. We don't talk about, oh, yo, that's messed up. No, we talk about, hey, what are we doing mm -hmm. in order for us to build? But how, so, do, you, how do you mitigate that? How do you control it? Because, you know, it's an open space. Yes. Yeah. But and, and, you know, environment and when you have an open environment and then you welcome everybody in, how do you control that aspect of it to say, no, this is just this? Because you can't police everybody. You can't. But that's why everybody gets interviewed so that they understand what they're walking into. Mm -hmm. Right. So. And, and, and that's why we're not in the business of declining people, but we're in the business of saying, hey, in here, this is what this is for. Mm -hmm. And we have an amazing team that's facilitating conversations, introducing members to this member, et cetera. You know? And now you know, we're asking everyone, hey, what do you want to accomplish right. in the next 12 months? Mm -hmm. And how can we help you get there? So it's doing this gap analysis. Where are you now? Where are you trying to go? Mm -hmm. And how can we help you get right. there? Right. And we do that specifically at the innovation lab. Like we're going to buy a, a 3D printer right in here. Right. For which, like, you know, we're discussing NFTs and Bitcoins, things that I don't even know anything about. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, honestly, <laughs> what, like, what do I know about NFTs? And right, right, right. <laughs> blockchain. <laughs> Whenever someone tells me about blockchain, my mind gets blocked because I'm like, I don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> about that anymore, right? Because I don't understand it. But yeah. here, I'm going to learn about yeah, blockchain yeah, and yeah. Bitcoin and NFTs have no choice. and all this stuff. You see what I'm saying? Because every every if, once you're immersed in something and it's all around you, you yeah. have no choice but to learn and adapt. Right, right, totally. So now, you know, we'll have the innovation lab, and then we're building a lot more labs right, right, right. throughout right. New York City. And beyond, right? So there's a lot of different labs, right? right? So we have the creative lab, we have the innovation lab, we're also building out the wellness lab. And, you know, like, I won't give more of the secrets out, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> but there are a lot more labs. And essentially, our labs um, are there to address the specific needs of that specific community. So when we build the Gentleman's Factory in Atlanta, we're going to scout what type of lab is needed in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. What type of lab is needed in London? Mm -hmm. What type of lab is needed for which when we go to Atlanta, perhaps we can have 10 labs or maybe we just need one. We'll see. It's all based upon the needs of the community. Right. So that's why, you know, we're, we're entering into um, General's factory in this industry more as a, how do we fit the needs of the people rather than the people needs to meet the needs of us. Right, right. We're a factory. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to ensure that, you know, black and brown men advance mm -hmm. 
And we're not saying this is what advancement should look like. Mm -hmm. We're asking you, what does advancement look like for you? Right, right, right. Now, my next question is, let's say, because I know there's a lot of lessons learned. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of it, right? And, yeah. we, and we probably, from an entrepreneurship perspective, that we're, there's a lot of things that we touch on that's generic that every entrepreneur goes through, mm -hmm. right? But what is it that the lessons that you learn specifically and how the, and what processes that you put in place to mitigate some of those lessons that you learned so it doesn't repeat? Mm. The lesson learned is that I'm a student. Mm. I'm a student. Still learning. I'm a, I'm a student. I literally said I don't know nothing about NFTs, Bitcoin, blockchain, but I built the innovation lab. So this innovation lab is for me too. Mm, I like that. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I think that, um, and obviously, you know, like I'm in therapy and, you know, I have a powerful, like support system and, and that's all authentic, right? So I don't lead with, a. Uh, I know everything and everyone follow my lead. Hell no. Mm -hmm. Follow our lead at GF because GF is designed for us. Right? So I had to learn that and I'm constantly learning that. And I lead with authenticity, right? So that's, so that's a lesson that I'm constantly learning. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that is also the building block of also asking for help. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've raised um, a ton of money through members. Right. Um, we've also raised money through, you know, the community. You see what I'm saying? So I'm saying all of that to say that, when you build something that's authentic, mm -hmm. then it lasts longer because the foundation is genuine. You built your foundation on a rock. But if you build your foundation on sand, when the wind blows, storm arises, it'll be washed away. Mm -hmm. So these are lessons that I'm constantly learning. And the last thing, too, is to surround yourself with people who are way smarter than you. Yeah. But you can only do that when you're authentic and not insecure because now you're not saying, I don't want this person to shine me. I thank God right, right, that right. I don't have this complex of, listen, you that know, ego, that ego. Yeah, oh my man, God. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Ooh, yeah. I thank God. I mean, yeah. and I, I, in, in the actuality, I'm glad you touched on that because I, I think it's good when somebody outshines you. Yeah. Because yeah. In, in, within your team. Yeah. Within of course. Your team, of right? course. Uh, outside, you got to be competitive. <laughs> right? <laughs> but within your team, I think it's good when somebody outshines you because it, it opens the window to say, okay, I need to get better. Yeah. I need to understand this. Right. Mm -hmm. But it also opens the window to say, Thank God this person's on my team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now they're giving us that competitive edge. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, like, um, if you do not define who you are, you will allow other people to define you. And when 1, they define you, they'll use their own definition. Mm -hmm. So with me, I know who I am, right? I'm strong. I'm a God-fearing man. You know, I am someone who's authentic. But I also am someone who knows my power. I know my power. Mm -hmm. I, I know, not even boastfully, I know that I'm a very powerful person mm -hmm. so because i know that i don't lead with the power that. yeah like i heard a pastor once say he says he said um your strength is demonstrated in your ability to be gentle and he used this analogy he said um if you're trying to pick up a heavy couch or this coffee table and if this coffee table is so heavy, and then when you're picking it up with two hands, you're making a big sound. And then you move it from this side of the room to that side of the room. Mm -hmm. What everyone is going to say is, oh, congratulations, you moved a very heavy table. But if you take the same table 
And if you pick it up with a pinky and don't make a sound, then everyone is going to say, wow. What a strong man. What a strong man. Mm -hmm. So I lead with the, with the pinky. With the pinky. I mean, <laughs> I clearly can't pick this up with the pinky. You <laughs> know what it's a metaphor. But yeah. that's how I lead. So because I have that foundational level of confidence, of substance, I don't need to shine because I know who I am. Yeah. I think that's, that's very important because... As a leader, and, and and obviously you're a great leader because you built something that uh, a lot of people are following. So, but as a leader, you have to understand um, where your strength lies. Yeah, yeah. Right. And you also have to understand how can I connect the pieces yeah. to make sure that we have a unified team, mm -hmm. right? Because you're only as good as the people around That's you, right? Yeah. And so you want to surround yourself with the most talented, the most... Uh, uh, the, the forward thinking people and the people that, you know, really are motivated to succeed. Yep. But then how do you bring all that talent together and make sure that we work in one accord? Yep. And sometimes the best way to do it is through that silent strength mm -hmm. is to say like, you know what, may, I'm a, I know my area. Mm -hmm. This is not my area. Let me let go. Yep. Right. And allow people to do they, they, they think. Yep. And then, you know, when to come in and when, when, to go out. It's yep. like, you know, jump rope. You yeah. Know? And yeah. It's like, you know, the double double. Yeah, 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 jump yeah, in, yeah, want to jump yeah, out. Yeah. But allowing people to still develop within that process sure. takes a lot of strength and it takes a lot of character yeah. to say, I may know enough, yeah. but I can't do this by myself. Yeah. I need people around me that's gonna that's smarter, can a, can execute efficiently mm -hmm. and, and get us there. And that's what, when I hear you speak, that's what I'm hearing. I'm yeah. hearing somebody that understands their team and understand their role that they play. Yeah. And that's very key in any business. Mm -hmm. And I say this all the time because a lot of people, when, when they do like entrepreneurship meetings and conferences and all that stuff, the, th the one thing that they always leave out is that leadership perspective of how to build your team and yeah. how to galvanize your team. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. talk about the numbers, we talk about the metrics, we talk about the profits, we talk about everything. But the most important thing is how to lead effectively, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I just heard just now. Somebody is saying, I can lead effectively by being the silent strength. Yeah, And that that's a model that I think a lot of us should follow. Yeah, I mean, and then I'll add to this too. So, like, our team is really diverse, right? Like, women are, like, Gentleman's Factory is not trying to create a world where women don't exist, right? Before you hold that thought. Yeah. Because when I went to the dinner. Yeah. And Dia tell you, I went to the dinner. And, uh, and, 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 and fortunate to be invited into the, um, the family and investors dinner. Amazing, by the way. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, but I asked D, can my wife come? I was like, can women come? Yeah. I didn't even say, can my wife? I said, hey, yeah. are women invited to this yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. But long story short, um, she wasn't able to make it. And, and it was too late by the time I thought about it. Because yeah. I'm, you know, when you hear gentleman factory, <laughs> yeah. you're thinking it's just all gentlemen. But yeah. when I went to the dinner and I saw females, mm -hmm. right? Guys bringing their spouse, bringing their friend, but it was a lot of females there. And that let me know, like, yes, it's the gentleman factory, yeah. but the backbone of it, yep. it's a lot of women. Of course. Go ahead. Of course, yeah. I mean, and women are, again, like, my team is real diverse, um, and it's majority women, right? Majority women. And they are, so my head of operations, right? My, like, chair of the transition into you know, this new space, uh, my interior designer, right? Like, you know, my uh, finance person, right? Like literally um, women. Um, and um, I mentioned the fact that I have such an, you know, an amazing team and Deirdre and Perry and all of the amazing people that are just helping this to move forward is the fact that what I look for isn't what school you went to, who you're connected with, mm. but it's, do you believe in this mission? That's the number one criteria. Mm -hmm. Do you believe mm -hmm. in the advancement of 
the black community. And if you don't believe in mm-hmm. the advancement, I don't care what fancy degree you have. Mm-hmm. This is just not for you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that's like a hard, hard, hard criteria. That's a hard discipline factor too. Yes. Yeah, yes. Cause you have to be like, you see it, right. You see a great talent. Yeah. Right. And you know, this talent will benefit you, mm-hmm. but do they believe in the overall vision yeah. to be on board, a part of the team of and then to say no yeah. and then say, damn, that's a great talent, but they don't believe. I tell people no all the time, mm-hmm. right? Because that's a core value of ours, right? You know, and then if you're not a part of this core value, mm-hmm. in which too, you know, I don't care what race you are, right? Like, do you believe yeah. in what we're, yeah, doing? we're doing? Yeah. And the reason why, and I was telling someone this recently too, I said, you know, it saddens me that spaces like the gentleman's factory even need to exist because, but it's go ahead because I should not my race or my skin tone shouldn't be the qualifying factor of every time I walk into a room. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You're talking about the world in general, the world in general, yeah. right? So, yes. so places like this shouldn't yeah. exist, mm-hmm. but when you look at the wealth gap between a black household and a white household, right? The disparities. Is the disparities sickening. is mm-hmm. insane. Mm-hmm. So we're not angling gentlemen's factory as anti anything. We're literally saying, hey, on Rikers Island, 90% of the MA population is black. Is that because black people commit 90% of the crimes in New York City? Absolutely not. But there is a systematic oppression that hovers over our communities. Now, there's mass incarceration, there's health disparities, there's wealth disparities, Mm -hmm. there are disparities among the disparities, right? <laughs> I don't mean <laughs> you know? to lie. It's yeah, legit. like, it's legit. Yeah, no, it's legit. Yeah, that's yeah, mad it's disparities, legit. bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Solid. with what we do, it's disrupting the status quo so that our community can advance. So, if someone is and, and, a part and of that changing team, the image, yeah. the imagery is very important. But now, last year, we invested in two um, black-owned media companies, Right. You know, two. Mm. And and these ain't big checks, by the way, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, so I don't want no one DMing us. Gentlemen's Factory is not a VC. We have a small angel fund where we make, you know, mm-hmm. investments, but then also lead members to institutional funds, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so we want skin in the game, you know, so that now we are sure you in, right? But the imagery is because we don't own the distribution of our content. So if we don't own the ears mm-hmm. of our people, then how can and the vision of our people and the, the ears vision, and the vision. The ear, if we don't own the ears and the visions, mm-hmm. and you know, like I'm not saying that, please don't take a literal. I'm not trying to own no one's ears or <laughs> one's vision. Please don't take this yeah. out of context. But if we don't own the ears and the vision, mm-hmm. then how can like you know, good news, bad news travel a lot quicker than travels news, yeah. on an eagle, right? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Good news travels on a snail. But if we have eagles, right, and that's the distribution of our content, mm-hmm. then we can share our good news. That's one thousand percent. Smitty and I talk about this all the time. Is uh not only putting the right message out there to put, make sure that our people uh, are talked about, mm-hmm. but to show diversity in different spaces, fields, right? So mm-hmm. that way people can understand that there's more to just rap and entertainment. Nothing wrong with that yep. because I love rap, you know, and I love entertainment. <laughs> I sit there and watch movies, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. we want to show that there's other avenues. There's so many people that's doing so many things, touching on different um, avenues when it comes to business. Mm-hmm. But most importantly, we want to put our people in a good light to say, look what this person is doing. Mm-hmm. And they're not in the mainstream media. Yeah. 
right? Look at this person, you know? And it's also to help young people get a foothold mm -hmm. to start off, right? So if you could highlight someone that you see has potential, why not highlight them for that way they could scale? Mm -hmm. Because what it does is it promotes us as a as a group, mm -hmm. right? And we're, we're very passionate about keeping the, the, not only just the organic side of it, but making sure that the, the, the imagery and the message mm -hmm. remains that, listen, there's people out there that's doing positive things mm -hmm. and, and we want to keep it positive. And I've had several people that want to come on the show for the wrong reason. They want to yeah. promote negativity. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'd rather celebrate yep. somebody that's doing well then promote negativity because yep. that doesn't help, right? It doesn't help our community. But the more we celebrate each other, celebrate the things that we got going on, the more we can say, okay, this young person that's looking up, right? And he wants to be a young, he's a younger version of Jeff and he's inspiring to be great, but there's no Jeff out there. Mm. Or maybe there is a Jeff out there, but it's not being seen, heard, as often as as frequently. Yeah. So when I was in corporate America, one of the things that we had somebody that became our uh, senior vice president, and I said we need more of that image, but we didn't have it within our media station, mm. you no know, media department, however you want to call it. And one of the things when I was having a conversation, somebody asked me the question, and it was a the powerful person, all right, and I respect respect this person you know she's she's been she gave me a lot of feedback you know but as a white person you you can respect someone but they yeah. may not understand from our perspective yeah I'm right sure. For they sure. might fully understand you know they they can always be there supportive and do i but they may not fully understand mm -hmm. so when i said that's great when they said well don't you have this person as an image i'm like that's great but they're not frequently being seen frequently being spoken about mm -hmm. and that's the key thing that we have to get ourselves so frequently in the media so frequently in the airways mm -hmm. that people start to as they grow older they start to say you know i can identify with this person i can identify yep. with this person and that's sure. how you grow a generation yep yep because a generation they not everybody's not aiming to be an entertainer yeah because they see certain different avenues that they may not, they may like. Absolutely. And somebody out there is probably saying, "I want to build something like what Jeff is doing." Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. They may not build it. Yeah. Yeah. But they may come to a Jeff sure. and say, "Can you hire me? Because I want to be a part of this." Yep. 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 And that's the most important thing. Totally. No, I agree. I yeah. agree. One thousand percent. One last question, right? Um, Noted what I just spoke about, about young Jeff. What do you say to the people that are starting out? What advice would you give them to basically to start now? Like you, you, I think the, the, the problem with a lot of us is that we're so scared to start. Mm -hmm. Once we start, we're in emotion, right? Yep. And then from that point on, we're guilty of either quitting or, or keep going forward. Yep. But a lot of fear stems from not being able to start. Yep. So what advice would you give to somebody to get started? Well, first thing I say is listen to the It Starts Now podcast, right? Oh, you know? man. <laughs> That's, what I was just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's one. And then also what I would say to be very transparent, to be very transparent, very transparent. Nobody has the right answers. Everybody's figuring it out. Hmm. Everybody's figuring it out. Everybody's figuring it out. Everything is a case study. Nobody has the right answers. We're just figuring it out. Hmm. What differentiates hmm. um, some groups or some ethnicities is that their ability to figure it out when they make mistakes there they could use a pencil to erase their mistakes mm. and but success does that no but watch this they could use a pencil to erase their mistakes but then 
with other ethnicities, our mistakes was written in pen. Mm. Right? Mm. So our margin of error is limited given the resources. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a resource game. Mm -hmm. That's it. Think about it. COVID, nobody ever went through a global pandemic living in the United States. That's true. Or living on Earth, right? Mm -hmm. With the world shutting down, literally nobody, when the ball was dropping in 2020, nobody was like, all right, yo, cool, right? So there's a vaccine that's going to take place. And then, you know what I'm saying? Nobody, if, if there's 5 million, I mean, 5 billion, 10 billion, 20 billion people in the world, mm -hmm. I don't know how much it is, but mm -hmm. it's like 5, 10 billion, whatever. Nobody on earth said, yo, I'm going to plan for a global pandemic. So mm -hmm. no big company mm -hmm. or anything. Yeah. So when... COVID, when the NBA shut down, that's how I like determined the date of COVID, right? You know, <laughs> when the NBA shut that's down. Margin. Yeah, yeah, right? When the NBA shut yeah. down, everybody was like, oh, snap, this is real. Yeah, yeah. So during that time, everybody, every human on earth was figuring it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, and then given the resources mm -hmm. of certain, certain, um, you know, institutions, mm -hmm. that's how they were able to say, okay, you know what? I can float by right. because I have the runway to do it. So I'm, you know, using that again as an example to mm -hmm. say, nobody has the right answers. Mm -hmm. It's a resource game, but you have to start so that you can know what you need. Right. A lot of times people are like, yo, like I need a hundred page business plan. You know, people are like, yo, things need to be trademarked first because this idea, no one ever did it in the world. <laughs> no, listen, please. Yeah. Everybody thought about it. It's all about the execution. That's Facts. what it is. Facts. I can literally tell the world all of the labs that mm -hmm. Jonas Factory is going to open. Can you execute it? Yeah. Can you make it happen? Come to fruition. Can you make it happen? Yeah. Can you make it happen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? 1,000. So I think, again, it's about, you know, just having folks start to figure it out and then do a gap analysis. Where are you now? Where are you trying to go? And how can you get there? And what do you need to get there? But then also saying, what is the resource that you need? Because if I have a fund... Gentleman's Factory has a small fund, but very small, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying, right? You know? And if I'm going to write a $50,000 check to someone, mm -hmm. not to say that we write $50,000 checks, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Or $100,000 checks, no. Or maybe. But uh, <laughs> um, if I'm willing to give or willing to invest $50,000, mm -hmm. do you know what you're going to do with it? Very and good. or... If you say that you need $2 million, what's the plan with it, right? You see what I'm saying? And also, too, last thing that I'll say on this topic is, like, don't be afraid mm -hmm. of money. So if you have a really great plan, mm -hmm. and if you say, damn, you know what? I'm going to need $10 million mm -hmm. to do this. All right, cool. So if $10 million is your giant, mm -hmm. Find way to get $10 million. Yeah. Don't say, damn, son, $10 million. No, you look at $10 million to say, okay, cool. You know what? How do I get this? How do I get it? Yeah. As opposed to, damn, son, it's $10 million. Yeah. If it's a billion dollars, it's like, yo, all right, cool. You know what? How am I going to get a billion dollars? Yeah. Rather than, damn, it's Creating a that dollars. roadmap. Exactly. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So. No, no, I appreciate that. And, and thank you so much for explaining that. Um, last thing. We were... I was at the Knicks game, and the very next day you were at the Knicks game. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just want to ask you a question: Who's who's your team? Yo, honestly, you know my team, unfortunately, is not the Knicks. Yeah, because growing up, 
um, I saw the emotions that my father had to go through every but time. But that's Jordan, though. Well, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, Jordan killed a lot of emotions. I mean, but that makes sense. I've been good ever since, right? right? You know, I mean, 1999, yeah, they, sure. they did go to the final. Shout yeah. out to, uh, you know, Latrell Sprewell yeah. and uh, Alan Houston, you know. Uh, but there was still the eighth seed that year. Yeah. It wasn't until Alan Houston did the shot against Miami. He, and you know, they, all of that, they, right? they made a run. Right, right. right, right. They made a run. So... Uh, because I want like peace and sanity in my household. I, you know, can't be a Knicks fan, you mm -hmm. know, because I want my children and my wife to not have to look at me yell at the TV. Right? <laughs> or throw things at the yeah, TV. Yeah, throw things at the TV. <laughs> so my team, and I'm not a bandwagon, right, watch right, this, right. right? My team mm -hmm. is the Golden State Warriors. Let me tell you why. Okay. Because I've been following Steph Curry. Um, since day college, since, right? Yeah, me and, too. It, yeah, and then because I am a closeted Knicks fan, right? Mm -hmm. So Knicks that year had the eighth round. I mean, the eighth draft pick, mm -hmm. and I was praying mm -hmm. for Steph Curry to be a Nick, right? Mm -hmm. So Steph Curry, um, the Warriors drafted him seventh. Right? Right. As opposed to eighth. Mm -hmm. So then my love for Steph Curry through Davidson mm -hmm. then tracked him to when to he Golden State. Um, to like Golden yeah. State. So your disappointment in the Knicks not being able to acquire him. Yeah. And the fact that you already build this bond. Yes. I built that the bond. Tr transition you over to Golden State because yeah. you're like, yo, I really like this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah, me yeah, follow yeah, this yeah, career. Yeah, 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 I totally yeah. get it. So we're here together. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> and that's the reason I can articulate yeah, it because yeah. we're here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, <laughs> bro, this has been great. Listen, um, this is about the time right now. I wanted to personally thank uh, Jeff for coming out and for helping us out and celebrating. But uh, not only celebrating the Gentleman's Factory, but celebrating It Starts Now. But we would love to celebrate his birthday. And a <laughs> congratulations <laughs> for opening up. For opening up uh, the, the Gentleman's Factory over here downtown Brooklyn, but also for his birthday. Oh, we kind of missed it, and we just wanted to show you love, so we brought you a cake. Oh, I was going to put uh, It Starts Now slash Gentleman's Factory. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we just wanted to say thank you, oh, congratulations, thank and thank you, everything. So, guys, we're going to go celebrate. We got the drinks out. We got the cakes. But just don't forget... You can find us on IG. It starts now. The handle is in the description below. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and don't forget to leave a comment below or questions you would like for us to answer. Thank you for joining us. This was amazing. I am Stan Lane. And as always, it starts now. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, thank hey, you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay. Happy birthday, brother. Oh, thank you, man. Happy birthday. You know what you like?